김경화 목사님의 설교 시리즈 시대에 따른 진리가 성경을 나누면 보이는 진리들이라는 제목으로 출간되었습니다. I won't take up too much more of your time, but I want to give you something out of Mark chapter 4. That Lord willing will be a blessing and a help to you and will help you in your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Will help you to remember some things, some lessons to learn here. And so in Mark chapter 4, I want to begin reading in uh it's Mark 5. Mark chapter 4, let's begin reading in verse 34. Mark chapter 4 in verse 34. The Bible says, But without a parable spake he not unto them, and when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. And the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? I want to preach a sermon uh, shortly this morning out of this passage entitled Lessons on the Life of Faith. Lessons on the Life of Faith. Now, as a young man, I know this, that there's two ways to learn in life. You're either going to learn by experience, which means you're going to go out and you're going to make your own decisions. You're going to stand or fall on your own decisions. You're going to take the responsibility for your actions and you're going to come out at the end of your life with a lot of wisdom, learned by experience, but you're going to come out with a lot of baggage too. And you're probably going to come out a little bit shorter than where you could have come out had you learned some lessons from others. And so that's the first way. You're going to learn by your experience. And that's really the foolish way of learning. And uh, then there's another way of learning. You're, you, you can learn by the experiences of others. And you can learn about their failures. And you can implement things in your life to where you won't make the same mistakes. Or you can learn about their successes. And you can implement things in your life to be successful. And be it money-wise or spiritually-wise. You know, you can look at men's lives and understand where they failed and where they succeeded and do those things in your own life. That's the best way to learn. And the problem is that uh, young men and, and young women have too much pride... <laughs> to learn by others' experiences, and they say, well, it's going to go different for me. Uh, you know, we, I, I know they messed up, but I'm not going to mess up, and then they do, you know. It's just the way that it goes. So I know those two things. And so coming into this passage, there's some lessons that you and I can learn if you're willing to learn them. And if you're willing to learn them and apply them, then it'll mean that you'll come out a little bit closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. Your Christian, your practical Christian everyday life will be a little bit easier, a little bit better. Uh, but if you fail to learn these lessons, you have a hard road ahead of you. And that doesn't mean that you won't turn out as best as you can for the Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't mean that you won't ever be in fellowship with Him or anything like that. It just means that you're going to have a rougher road than some. And so with that in mind, I want to look into the passage and show you just a couple of things this morning. And the first thing I want you to notice is that there's always going to be another boat. There's always going to be another boat. And this is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's been into His ministry now for a little bit. And I want to call your attention back to Luke chapter 5. Look at Luke chapter 5. Earlier on in the ministry of Jesus Christ, He begins to pick and choose His disciples. And along with that, one of these disciples... is on the seashore, cleaning out his nets, and here's how he starts off with the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at Luke chapter 5 and verse 1. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. 
And so Simon Peter starts off his walk with the Lord Jesus Christ getting into a boat. And then they get out of it eventually. And he goes along with the Lord Jesus Christ. And here he is back, if you come back to Mark chapter 4. And he gets in the boat again and he says, all right, boys, here's, here's another one. Got to get in the boat again. Got to go somewhere again. And that's just to remind you folks that it doesn't matter how old you are. And it doesn't matter how many boats you've gotten into in the past. There's always going to be another one. The Lord's always going to ask you to express faith in him and what he wants you to do by getting into another boat. And that doesn't stop until you and I get to glory. When the Lord Jesus Christ raptures us out of here, or by death we meet the Lord. You haven't arrived until you're in the grave. (laughs) And so along your Christian life, just remember that maybe last year you stepped into a really big boat over a deep sea and the Lord got you through it. But He's going to call you back to that seashore again. He's going to ask you to get in one again. And he does it here with his disciples. So it's a reminder to you and I that we haven't arrived. There's always another test of faith. There's another uh, uh, commitment, another thing that the Lord wants you and I to do. We ought not, as Christians, you and I should never get to the point where you're stagnant in your walk. And so the Lord will call you back and say, okay, it's time for another boat. That boat with Simon Peter was his learning of who Jesus Christ was. He starts off in that passage in Luke chapter 5, and he says, Master, in verse 5. And in verse 8, he calls him Lord. And so Jesus Christ says to Simon Peter, I want you to take that ship and go out there, and we're going to do this, and then we're going to do that, and I've got some fish out there for you. And Simon Peter goes through that with the Lord Jesus Christ and comes out the other side, knowing who Jesus Christ is, and then following him as a disciple. But here it's a different boat. It's just a reminder to tell you there's always going to be another one. And so that's the first thing we learn. The second thing you learn is that along this life of faith, you're headed for a destination. And look at verse 35, the place. And the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. Now, as a Christian, if you're saved in here this morning, when you got saved, there's a lot of things that happened. And uh, the Lord told you, Maybe he didn't tell you directly, but the Lord uh, uh, made it possible for you to have a home that switched. Your home was hell, but now your home is heaven. And the Lord's not going to leave you down here on earth. In John chapter 10, he comes down through the deep, through that great body of water. He's going to call you home one of these days, and you're going to go across the sea back into heaven with Jesus Christ. And it's just like that hymn. On Jordan's stormy banks I stand and cast a wishful eye to Canaan's fair and happy land where my possessions lie. You're not staying here, Christian. You're going to the other side. And the Lord's made that promise to you and I. You can see that promise in Ephesians 4 and verse 30, John chapter 10, verses 28, 29, and 30, and then 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. The Lord keeps that promise to you that you are sealed under the day of redemption. The the power of God keeps you saved. You are put into the very hand of God and no man can get you out. You're headed for heaven, whether you like it or not. (laughs) And uh, Dr. Ruckman would make this this illustration. He would say it's kind of like an airplane. You're either going to go to heaven first class, economy, or kicking and screaming on the floor in the aisle. But if you are in the plane, you're going. You choose how you go. But notice in the passage, he doesn't just tell you that you're going to go to heaven, you're going to the other side. He says, let us. Look at the passage. In verse 35, he says, let us. So he's not going to allow you to go this life alone. The lost world has to go through this life alone. They have to do everything you do without Jesus Christ. And to that I say, hats off to them. I don't know why they do it. I don't know why you would spend 80 years with all the trouble and the sorrow and the pain of life without Jesus Christ and still fight for breath on your deathbed. I don't know how or why they do. They're without hope, without God, but that's not you, Christian. And uh, you know, faith is a lot better than the Old Testament, than the law. You realize, Christian, in here that when Jesus Christ, when you got saved by grace through faith, you're called to live by faith according to Romans chapter 1. 
2 Corinthians chapter 5 and Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. You're called to live by faith after that, not by sight. But you realize even though we aren't supposed to see anything, that even acting in faith is still better than being under the law? Look at Galatians chapter 3. Look at Galatians chapter 3. How, how would you like to live every moment of your life uh, and everything that you do with every thought coming in, every action that you've ever committed and always have to think about it, you know, especially getting into older age. I'm 30 now and I feel old now, but getting, getting a little older in your life and have to remember, wait a second, hold on, but is, is what I just did, is that covered in the law somewhere and I missed it? Could you imagine having that burden on your shoulders 24-7, 365? to maintain the righteousness between you and God so that you could even have fellowship with Him? But now, <laughs> but now, and uh, look at Galatians chapter 3, but now in Christ Jesus you are sometimes afar off or made nigh by the blood of Christ. That's Ephesians chapter 2. But in Galatians chapter 3, look at verse 22. But the Scripture hath concluded all under sin, and the promise, uh, that the promises by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. That's a whole lot better, Christian. <laughs> That's a whole lot better. Look at Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. I'm thankful that I don't have to worry about the righteousness which is of the law. Now, it doesn't mean that you don't do the things in the law, but you don't have to worry about them for righteousness anymore. And look at Romans chapter 4. Now, I've come through this passage plenty of times, and I, you ever get to thinking as you're reading your Bible, like, what did I miss? You know, you ever come through, like, if you read a cover to cover, but then you come back to do it a second time, you're like, I didn't see that the first time. <laughs> What is that? It's like that was hiding somewhere. It's like, the Lord's like, oh, did you, you forgot about that. And that, that thing that he shows you unlocks 10 things you were thinking about the last time you came through it. And he's like, how did I miss that? But you do. And look at Romans chapter 4. And let's pick it up in verse 14. Uh, For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. Now, you and I didn't just get salvation from hell, but we get in on some inheritances and promises that God made to Abraham by salvation through faith. And so that's what he's going through here in Romans chapter 4. So he says, For if they which are of the law be heirs, the faith is made void and the promise made of none effect. This is what he's talking about, is the promise made to Abraham according to the first part of the chapter. Now look at verse 15. Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore it, the promise, is of faith... Now watch the Lord's heart, that it might be by grace. And that is that the Lord set this thing up to die on the cross, be buried and rise again the third day, to offer free eternal life and the inheritance of the son, as a son of God, a fellow heir with Jesus Christ and all of those things. He did everything that he did so that he could offer it by faith so God could give it by his grace. That's a whole lot better, ain't it? Praise the Lord for it. So when you're talking about going to heaven and going with the Lord Jesus Christ, you're talking about something a whole lot better. And you and I get the opportunity to live during this, this time in the age of grace and during the time where salvation is offered for free. And so the Lord reminds you and I, coming back to Mark chapter 4, that you're headed for heaven and you don't have to go it alone. You don't have to go it alone. But uh, just like with anything in, in this life, on this sin-cursed earth and the sin-cursed flesh, you're going to have to go through things. Your faith will have to be tested. And so you see that in verse 37. There arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so, so that it was now full. And Christian, there's going to be some times in your life where it is going to feel like the boat's full. And there's some good preaching right here about the fact that even though the boat is full of water... It should be sinking, but because the Lord's on it, He doesn't allow it to sink. There's some good preaching right there. 
And that's something that you ought to remember. The Lord won't allow you uh, to sink. He doesn't put anything on you too much for you to handle, all those things. And then there's a, the constant reminder of these storms back in Acts 27. We won't turn there for time's sake. But in Acts 27, he hits that Eurycliden, and he gets into that place. He says three things about that storm. The first thing he says is that we, we cast off the tackling of the ship, and that's lighting, lightening the load. And sometimes, Christian, a storm just comes into your life because the Lord wants you to get some things out of your life that you don't need anymore. It might not be sinful. It's just the Lord says it's time to grow, and these things, if we're going to grow, they have to go. Then he says that we undergird the ship, and that's throwing the line out across the, the way that the wood is running. They run it in, in a perpendicular to that wood, and they bring it across the bow of the ship, and then they tie it off. That's so when the, when, when the ship crests the waves and it drops into that trough, it wouldn't bust apart. So, Christian, sometimes a storm comes in your life because the Lord wants you to strengthen the things that remain. Sometimes it is just to get you to pray just a little longer, read a little bit more, talk to the Lord a little bit more. Amen. Sometimes that's what it's there for. And then he says, we let her drive. And sometimes a storm is to get you to remember to let go and let God. But here in this place... He doesn't allow it to sink. So just as a reminder, a lesson for you is that you weren't saved out of the bad things that happened in this life. Death is still going to come if the Lord waits long enough. We'll all see the grave if the Lord waits long enough. We'll all see loved ones die. We'll all have trouble with the finances. We'll all have trouble with the children. We'll all have that stuff still going to go on. And if you're going to be a bold witness for Jesus Christ, then you enter into a, an arena where you get a lot more trouble from the devil. You get the pushback from the world, and you get the spiritual stuff. That, that, it's not going to stop. So don't think that just because you're saved and you're doing what God wants you to do that you won't go through storms. Because the Lord is the one that led these disciples into this storm. If you look at Amos and you look at Nahum, if you get uh, Nahum uh, chapter 1 and verse 3, and uh, if you get a passage in Amos 4 verse 13, if you want to write those down, that will show you that the Lord creates the wind. What kind of a storm did they go into? A storm of wind. The Lord led them right for it. And that's going to happen, Christian. So don't get all bent out of shape. Don't jump ship. Don't close the book. Don't stop praying. Don't stop coming to church. Don't stop getting around God's people and getting some help. Don't stop that stuff when the storm comes. Because that's when people leave. That's when they jump ship. Is when the storm comes. And so we learn that yeah, there, there, there's the place, and that's heaven. The Lord's going to go with you. The plight is a storm of wind. You're going to go through it. The plea. Look at, how, look at what happens in verse 38. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him and say, Master, carry us on author, we perish. That's you and I right there to a T. You could be following the Lord for 10, 15 years, but the moment he puts you into, into a storm, don't you care about me? That's human nature. You immediately flip the script, and now God doesn't care about you because he did something that you don't like. You just remember, Christian, that the Lord's doing what he's doing to, to help you to grow, and he knows what's best for you and I. So when you hit the storm, don't get all selfish. The right response is Luke 22, when Jesus Christ says, Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Look at verse uh, 39. Look at what the Lord does. Just, just to show you this, He doesn't even address their issue. Isn't that funny? Here it is, the disciples are flipping out. They have no idea what's going on. Their life is flashing before their eyes, and the Lord doesn't speak to them at all. He just gets up, walks over to the side of the ship, and He says, Peace be still, and there was a great calm. The wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Look at verse 40. He said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? He's not over there comforting them. He doesn't come down and say, oh, it's, it's going to be okay. You're going to be all right. You're still in the body of Jesus Christ. I'll eat none of those things. What's wrong, fellas? He says, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? What a couple of dumb questions. <laughs> like here it is, the boat's full of water. We're about to sink. My life is flashing before eyes. I really wanted to see my kids graduate college. I really had the... The college was, I had the retirement going. I had all these plans set up and all this stuff going on. And the Lord says, what are you so afraid of? How is it that you have no faith? Now, you know why those aren't dumb questions? It's because of verse 35. He already told them they were going to make it. 
he already said, hey, fellas, we're going to go over there. Let us go over, let us pass over under the other side. So when the disciples are going through the storm, even though you know, they might not have been able to see the land that they were headed to, the Lord still told them they were going to make it. It's just that in the storm, they quit trusting what God said. They have a crisis of faith because they stopped trusting what he said. What would you and I think of Noah today if 98 years into building the ark, he's up there on the scaffolding there, they're putting the finishing touches on, on the bow there, they're going to start working on the captain's quarters, you know. He's got the mill down there for the gopher wood. They've got the pitch going. They've got it rolling, boiled just at the right temperature. Shem, Ham, and Japheth are starting to bring some more gopher logs up. And you know what he just says? 98 years of this mess. Ain't a drop of rain anywhere. You know what? Hey, boys, we're just going to call it quits. Tired of this mess. Tired of them mocking me. Tired of them thinking I'm nuts. Just doing what the Lord told me to do, and here he is. You know, I've not seen a drop of rain over these last 98 years. It's been dry as, dry as cracker juice, as Brother Peacock says. And then, you know, you got the mist every now and then, all that kind of stuff. The Lord ain't doing this kind of mess. It ain't going to rain. We sure would have a different opinion of Noah, wouldn't we? But you know what he does? He becomes a preacher of righteousness. Showing those people that he believed God. And the very day... That the Lord said it was going to rain. There's animals are on the ship. Noah, his boys, and their wives are on that ark. And the Lord shuts the door of that thing, and then it starts to rain. You know what Noah didn't do? He didn't stop trusting what God said. Same thing goes for Abraham, David, and all those men. So the question this morning, Christian, is how's your faith? How's your trust in what God said? Is your faith better than it was a year ago, five years ago? Has it gotten better over the time of COVID? Has your relationship with Jesus Christ just sprouted and blossomed as it ought to have? Or are you still worried about what the news media is telling you? Have you forgotten that Jesus Christ is coming back in the clouds? That He's going to call your name if you're saved and here this morning He's going to call you home? Or has your eyes gotten too far down the road here on earth? Planning too heavily for retirement. Too much into the college graduations that you've lost sight of the rapture? That you've lost sight of the judgment seat of Christ? That you've lost sight of eternity? How's your faith? There's always going to be another boat. He already told you you're going to make it. You're not saved out of the bad things that happen here. But if you'll keep trusting what he said, he'll get you through. And then you know what happens in the next chapter, don't you? You know where they're going? They're going to the country of the Gadarenes. And a devil-possessed man sees some men going through a storm and the Lord calming the storm that they're in. And that devil-possessed man wants the same thing for himself. And so that Bible tells you that he meets the Lord right when that ship cuts the sand. That fellow's waiting on him. So they got an opportunity to get in on the Great Commission. Because the Lord tells him to go home and tell them, what great things I've done for you. They get to be a part of a missionary plant. How's your faith, Christian? Father, we come before you this morning. Thank you for the time. Pray you bless the sermon now. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Pastor.